Here's a video of me during virtue before I was saved by Jesus doing card readings. And here's a video of a card reader from Christ Alignment, which is a ministry connected with Bethel Reading Church. Do you notice any differences between the card reading video of Christ Alignment and my card reading videos? Nope, neither do I. They look almost identical. And that's the topic of today's video, where we'll be interviewing a former Christ Alignment card reader who tells it all, as well as several theologians and apologists who are joining me. In this video, you'll also see that Christ Alignment and Bethel Reading have both changed the wording on their website in response to criticism about the card reading practices. We're going to be talking about the cards that are used by Christ Alignment at New Age festivals under the guise that they are sharing the gospel with New Agers. The Destiny cards compared to my old cards. See how they're more similar? Now take a look at the Destiny cards compared to Tarot cards. They do look similar. As much as Jenny Hodge and even now Bethel Redding wants to argue that they're not Tarot cards, they look like Tarot cards. In this next video clip, you'll meet a woman who came to me five years ago. I'm finally releasing her interview because I have enough material to back it up, uh, that it's not slander or gossip at all. Uh, and this woman, it was a former card reader with Christ Alignment, working directly under the Christ Alignment founder, Jenny Hodge. And we want to thank you so much for coming on today and, and telling us about your story. You're very welcome. I'm so happy to be here. At what point did she say, but you can't use the name of Jesus? Uh, that was from the very beginning. And that was, she made that clear to everyone mm -hmm. um, from the start. You know, where's the gospel? Oh, we're not here to preach the gospel. Then why are you calling you? Like, it was two messages. So she'd say something to the church mm -hmm. and then to the world, she'd say the truth of what she was actually really saying. So the, f the first thing that you do, they also have at a local market, they also have um, a store. It's a yeah. permanent store now. And I went there for the first time and I just went to watch to see what they did. And then someone came for, you know, for a reading. And she's like, oh, we call them readings. And I kind of went, okay. And she's like, you know, it's like we're praying. Really, we're praying, God, but we're just not using the word prayer. And I was like, okay, that's fair enough. I can, I can, I can understand that. And she said, oh, you know, and we don't use in the name of Jesus. And I was like, and I just kind of looked at it and I thought, what do you mean? She's like, you know, because we don't want to put people off. We know that what power we're moving in. We know it's the Holy Spirit. We know that it's it, we're doing this in Jesus. She goes, but, you know, it's better if you use language. So we used to use language like the ascended master. These are all oh, no. new age, you mm -hmm. know, the ascended master. Uh, if we were going to refer to the Bible, we had to say the ancient Jewish texts. Um, you know, so there was like, it was just basically she was feeding us what to say and what to do. The thing is, I was so used to saying Jesus and the Holy of Spirit course. that I, I kept saying it. So I was always, my frustration was I saw over time that there wasn't producing fruit. Mm -hmm. And the fruit right. of that to me was salvation. They were claiming that they were having salvation. Someone might say the prayer, but I would follow up with these people and they were not even out of the new age. The, people the, would be the, calling the gospel me, has to be shared. There's no gospel. Exactly. Exactly. And the thing is, every time, um, the thing that disturbed me the most, um, there was a few times and a few people that I just, God really, really, you know, sometimes God will bring you someone who's just so ripe to receive the gospel. And they're looking, they're so desperate for answers. And I remember there's this one, and a lot of the people that God would bring me to minister to were people who'd grown up as believers. Okay. Who had been. And so they were the people that God's constantly seemed to bring to me. And the whole point was I knew it was to get this person open to the Holy Spirit so they could receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, how do you do and that when they tell you don't say the name of Jesus or the Bible? Because I still did. Oh, okay. Just, Good for you. So, so you, you shared the gospel at these mind, body, spirit festivals. Yes. And then Jenny would just come all of a sudden and be like, tap me on the shoulder. That's it. Enough. Enough. Stop. Hmm. And then I, I we would both kind of, because we were both in this, you know, we're just, sure. God is doing something beautiful. We would just be jolted and that person would just be so, it was almost like you just threw cold water over them. When I was with Christ Alignment, I had people and people that were with me at can attest to this. I would have people waiting for me for hours. Well, absolutely. And so I'd have, 
so I would have literally witches and, um, you know, people that have been psychics mm -hmm. for years wanting to speak to me. They're like, we don't, we, we can see that there's something on your life. Sure. But it was also the other thing, the other side of why Jenny would stop me is because I was taking too long. Um, mm -hmm. She was always telling me that I take too long because the more I take time, the less money is coming in because people would give donations and people that saw me were very generous. They were so touched. They just wanted to, it was like just a way of honor. They would just, I think they thought it was going to me, but you know, they would, I would see what they would put in to the donation thing. And it was like, I was, like I said, I was basically just being used as a mm -hmm. factory production line. You, you didn't get paid to do this. No, absolutely not. Not even a tip or anything. Nothing. Zero. Okay. So where did those donations go? Do you know? Apparently it's to pay for the stalls, but I can tell you that they made more than enough money to pay. I know it was a risk. Yes, they're putting up their own money to go in there, but if it wasn't going to be profitable, I'm, I'm, I am say I can't say this a hundred percent. This is just my own personal opinion. I think that they were based on what I could see that they were profitable. I want to show you something from as of January, 2024, when I'm filming this part uh, on Bethel Redding's website, here they address the cards. Now, the cards are a product of Christ Alignment, which is a Australian company founded by Jenny Hodge. Jenny is the mother of Ben Fitzgerald, who is part of Bethel Redding's Awakening Europe ministry, where he's sharing the Bethel Redding teachings in Europe. There's lots of posts of Bethel Supernatural Ministry School students who to be uh, Christ alignment readers. And so what is the relationship of Christ alignment to Bethel Redding? I think a lot of that um, relationship from my understanding at the time was because of Ben Fitzgerald's position, there is, that adds credibility to what Christ alignment does. You know, and any time, any time that Jenny would, you would challenge her, she'd say, oh, but Ben said this. And so Ben was definitely the spiritual advisor. Um, and, you know, because look, and I can understand where he's coming from. I saw recently that video where he said, you know, why would I endorse a witch? You know, she's my mother. It's like, that's the whole problem because she's your mother. You can't see yeah. beyond that because you want to honor her as your mother, but you're not really seeing what's going on. And the breaking point for me, um, so yeah, there are definitely people that come from Bethel, but some of those students are Australians who have been to Bethel and then they've come back and then okay. they um, do some stuff with a Christ alignment. I didn't actually see any American Bethel students. I have heard that there has been some, but yeah. in my time I never saw that. Okay. As you know, our ministry is to non-Christians, not Christians. We're not interested in using any of our cards whatsoever in any church or any church event because all of these were created to reach the lost. One of the dangers of Christ alignment card reading practices is that it is spreading into churches. Here is Samuel Fitzgerald, brother of Ben Fitzgerald and another son of Jenny Hodge. And Samuel is a pastor at Fire Church Hawthorne in Australia. And here is Samuel along with his brother Ben and also Todd White in a commercial for Christ Alignment. Yeah. Something expecting to be spiritually made whole. They're looking for light. They're looking for light in a dark place. And, and this ministry is bringing that light to that dark place. Since being involved, I've grown so, so much. Christ Alignment. Christ Alignment. Christ Alignment. And even more shockingly and alarmingly, Samuel invited his mother and her crew to come give card readings at his church. The church advertised this as a Christ Alignment Encounter Night. Coming to the church and giving readings, you can see in these pictures that these were full-on card spreads, and it's even in the dark like a seance at this fire church Hawthorne, Jenny Hodges' own son's church. So she says she doesn't do these readings at churches. She says she doesn't do these readings for Christians. As you know, our ministry is to non-Christians, not Christians. We're not interested in using any of our cards whatsoever in any church or any church event because all of these were created to reach the lost. So, so who is at these churches if they are not supposed Christians? This is not a New Age event. This is at a supposedly a Christian church. So she's contradicting herself here. 
the website Church Watch Central came up with this flowchart that you can see on the screen now. And you can see Ben Fitzgerald in the upper left-hand corner, Daniel Hagen, who's also an apostle of Fire Church. And then to the upper right, you can see Samuel Fitzgerald, Ben's brother and Jenny's other son. And according to Church Watch Central, the Apostolic ACC Network was founded by Hillsong Apostle Brian Houston. Many of you know that Brian Houston has come under severe criticism for a lot of the dealings at Hillsong. And this flowchart says that the Hagans and also the Fitzgeralds are part of this ACC Apostolic Network founded by Hillsong. It, it would be extremely dangerous for a church to invite in Christ alignment or, or anyone who's claiming to do something like destiny card readings. These, you know, this is a uh, divination um, and it practices that are expressly forbidden by God in scripture. It doesn't matter if you, you know, use the name of Jesus or the name of Christ when you're doing it, as you are well aware, uh, new agers will use uh, those names as well. You know, this is divination. It's using tools and techniques to gain uh, secret information, uh, knowledge from the spirit realm um, and through means that are not approved by God and scripture. And so it'd be extremely dangerous for and unwise for a church to invite in uh, someone to do these these type of readings. By the time I got involved with Christ alignment, I had literally I had met, um, I actually met Jenny um, and actually Ben Fitzgerald had actually come to preach at our church and okay. he brought um, his mum and dad with him. And, so, so Ben um, Fitzgerald, who's, he's associated with Bethel Church, Bethel Reading. Yes. And then his at mom time, is, the, is Jenny Hodge and Kenny Hodge, right? And then do, yes. they, do they own Christ Alignment or? They had founded Christ Alignment. So it was interesting because what happened as soon as I left that church, I actually called her. Oh, I don't know okay. why. I called her and she said to me, now that I think about it, I think, oh, that's spooky. But at the time I thought it was God. She said to me, oh, we've been, we've been praying for, we've been waiting for you to call us. And I was like, okay. And she's like, we want you to come and join Christ Alignment. We can see you. We can recognize that you have a prophetic gift on your life. And these at the time, it was making me feel validated. At the time, mm -hmm. it's like the enemy knew that I still had a bit of a soul wound there. They knew how to hook me in. Mm -hmm. and yep. that's how I got involved. Always. The enemy loves to flatter us and make us feel special. Yes, absolutely. I liked the idea of a ministry. See, for me, ever since I became to the Lord, I thought that, you know, I remember when I first got saved, I went back into all the nightclubs that I used to go to, and I would just, whoever I could speak to, I would just tell people my testimony. Mm. So I didn't have an issue about going to bars or going to clubs because okay. I knew why I would be. So for me, I was very open I was very she, open to God. Jesus said sick people need doctors. Exactly. So I didn't have a problem with going into festival. We, I mean, we did things like um, we did the Mind, Body, Spirit Festival. We can also see that Bethel Redding seems to be comfortable with their students from Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry using with cards because they've even allowed card reading at their own Bethel Redding campus as evidenced by a woman named Teresa Dedman. Teresa Dedman says that in 2002, my family attended Bethel, which led to a 19-year staff position overseeing Bethel's School of Supernatural Ministry and forerunning the Creative Arts booth at Bethel. Teresa Dedman created some cards that she also calls destiny cards, but apparently they're not the same as Jenny Hodge's destiny cards. It's just something else that these two seeming ministries connected to Bethel both have destiny cards. Teresa writes, as you can see on the screen, that when she came up with the brand destiny cards to describe what we would give to people as we witness to them about the good news of Jesus, I had in mind a Hallmark card. She created a book called Born to Create, Stepping into Your Supernatural Destiny, that is still for sale on the Bethel website and has a foreword by Bill Johnson. In the acknowledgments of this book, Teresa Dedman said that she'd like to thank Bethel Church, especially Bill Johnson and Chris Vallotton, among others. The book is endorsed by Chris Vallotton, Heidi Baker, 
amongst others. You can read this for yourself on the screen. You'll see how Teresa Dedman created events on Bethel's campus and then used the students from the Supernatural School of Ministry at Bethel Reading, and they gave card readings, destiny card readings, right there at Bethel on page 144 of Teresa Dedman's book, Born to Create, she writes, During the school year, I have the School of Ministry students sit at Bethel's welcome table and prophesy to newcomers through destiny cards, singing and playing instruments over people. Teresa Dedman writes, In 2010, I put on a Kingdom School of Creativity at Bethel, which ended with an all-day arts festival called Heart for nations in one of our parks. She says, we set up booths for dream interpretation, destiny writing, destiny cards, hourly crafts for children, destiny makeovers, amongst other things. So apparently Bethel is very comfortable with this sort of practice because they haven't said anything about Teresa Dedman. Maybe they will now after this video. Who knows? We'll see. A few years ago, there was a big brouhaha about calling Bethel using tarot cards. Now, as you may know, my background was, before I was saved, that I was involved with cards. I worked with a publisher, a New Age publisher, and made oracle cards and also tarot cards. And I also used them personally and professionally for over 20 years. So I know cards and I know some of the arguments that are being made here. First of all, I want to say that these cards are not tarot cards in the literal sense, but the usage, as we'll see in here, is oracle and divination, which is a condemned practice that is in the Bible condemned in both the Old and in the New Testament. So they argue that the destiny cards are not tarot cards, but look at what Holly Pivik, author of the new book Reckless Christianity, found. This archived website from Christ Alignment is from churchwatchcentral.com and also is on hollypivik.com. She found the old Christ Alignment page and listen to this. It says, we believe that they, the destiny cards, are more predictive and higher than most tarot. So right there, they called these cards predictive. That's divination. That is condemned in the Bible. And then they say they're higher than most tarot, which means that they are including the cards in the category of tarot, that these ones are better than most tarot. And then look at this. This is offensive and adds to what we're talking about here. They have a category of readings called Psalm card readings. It's like they're trying to make a play on word and be cutesy with palm reading. But this is offensive. This is God's word, the book of Psalms. Anyway, they say Psalm readings are similar to Tarot in that cards are counted out according to your birth date and year. Only three cards are used, and these will represent your past, present, and future. They've obviously changed their website since they received criticism for this, but here it is in writing. And this is from the archive of Christ Alignment. Here's another contradiction that makes no sense to me. In the following audio interview, you can hear Jenny Hodge defending her destiny cards as not being tarot cards because they have no words on them. And the cards are only photographic images. They have nothing on them. They don't have words on them. They're photographs. And then in the next clip, you'll see Jenny holding up her various cards. And look, they all have words on them. But that's not even the point, because there are actual tarot cards that have no words on them. They have the symbols, no words. So you, you can't say that a card deck is not tarot because there's no words, even though all of her cards have words. And besides that, as I've been saying, it's how they're used. I met a woman in Miami Beach who had a thriving card reading business, and her cards, she showed them to me. They were completely blank on both sides. That's right. The deck was white cards, front and back, and she would lay them out, and then she would see visions on the cards, and her clients thought she was really accurate, and as I said, she had a very popular 
business doing this. So you don't even need to have words or pictures on the cards for them to be used as tarot cards. They're also giving animal card readings. That's something that's borrowed from shamanism to talk about the significance or the signs or the omens from animals. That's not Christian. That's not biblical at all. Another set that we use are these ones that we made. These are little animal cards where in an encounter, often we found that um, God was giving people pictures of animals. Uh, these cards have been amazing in, in blessing people in so many ways. And on the back, we've put the meaning of the animal, but it is the God-given meaning of the animal as they were designed by God. So again, these cards do not predict the future and they are not used in any way for uh, telling of the future in any shape or form. They're just tools. When someone might see a picture in an encounter, they might see, um, I just saw an eagle. So then we can get out the eagle card and just go through some of the qualities of an eagle with them. And often those qualities will really mean a lot to the person or have something relevant to them. We believe like that the Holy Spirit can use anything really. This is something that I was very involved in when I was in the New Age and about the power animals and the spirit animals. Of course, Chris Vallotton of Bethel has talked about spirit animals. I had a vision of an owl and an owl started visiting our house at night. You know what they do? Whoo. In case you didn't know. <laughs> and, uh, and the Lord uh, started talking to me about the fact that the owl is wise, the owl is nocturnal, sees the darkness, and knows who's who. <laughs> and the Lord said, the mascot of this season is not the eagle, but it's the owl, because I'm going to take people, I'm going to take the prophetic gift that's on this house and I'm going to make it nocturnal. I'm going to make it live in darkness. I'm going to send you to the darkest places of the planet and you're going to bring the kingdom of God into places no one ever get into. And you're going to teach people the wisdom of God and they're going to know who's who. This one also makes me scratch my head. Here is Jenny claiming that her color cards have definitive messages from each color. And where did she get those definitive meanings? It's certainly not in the Bible. And there are New Agers who teach that certain colors mean certain things, very similar to dream interpreters or numerologists saying that certain numbers mean things. But the fact that she's holding this out, that if you choose this color, it means this, that really is mysticism if not outright divination and psychic work, because that is not biblical. You don't see anyone interpreting colors in the Bible. Another set that we have are these, beautiful set, again, painted by a different prophetic artist. Um, these are called the color cards. On the back is the meaning of the color. And these meanings we've taken off John Paul Jackson's dream color meanings. So they are the meanings of the color. These cards we use probably the most of all because we've been finding, we've been finding for about the last three years that everyone, regardless of where we go, whether it's to um, any New Age festival, wherever, whoever the people are, that they, God is showing them a color. And it's been very important for us to actually identify the meaning of that color. So we only go by um, Streams Ministries colors, what they, what the definition given by John Paul Jackson. Despite their claims on the Bethel Reading website that Christ Alignment does not do past, present, or future readings, we use cards in our Destiny Revelations. Um, our cards are not foretelling the future. Notice in this 2022 video where Jenny Hodge is talking about past, present, and future in a three-card reading. These were her cards, and we both got really amazing words on these cards. Yep. Do you want to say what you got on the poppies? Yes. Past? Yep. Uh, 
sorry, past, yep. present, future. Yep. What did you get on the poppy? You know what tarot cards are. So let me go on ahead and do a three card spread for you to read your past, present, and your future. But I'm not reading your future, just your destiny. So that I can eventually give you Christ. <laughs> this is identical to the type of readings that I did and that I taught and that I wrote about before I was saved. Uh, my name is David Wolcott. I'm a professional apologist. Uh, my primary focus is in progressive Christianity and deconstruction. David, you've done a lot of research about Christ alignment, their practice of using cards under the guise of doing evangelism, and their connection to Bethel Redding. You've been like a Christian sleuth detective in finding things that may even not even be on the web anymore. Could you walk us through what you found as connections between Christ Alignment and Bethel Redding, please? Yeah. So uh, my first interest in this, uh, frankly, was when Bethel brought, uh, tried to bring Gandalf on stage and channel him to end racism, which was uh, just disastrous. But from that point, it uh, made it important for me to look into and to research. One of the resources I'd collected is Bethel had published an article uh, where they talked specifically about Christ alignment. In fact, the URL, uh, which if you go to my website, thedavidwolcott.com slash Bethel hyphen tarot, uh, I have the original URLs there. Bethel's original website was bethel.com slash about slash Christ alignment. And they had an entire letter. It was talking about the Hodges. It was in, it was specifying Christ alignment. It was saying that the Hodges are the parents of Ben Fitzgerald. Uh, and that, you know, Bethel supports them, that they're not doing tarot cards, uh, and a number of other specific things. So I saved that off because I wanted to have a copy of it just in case. Uh, a couple months ago, uh, I had a conversation with someone. This was, and there was the typical, you know, no, Bethel doesn't support tarot cards because they have this page that says they don't support tarot cards. So I went back to the page and the actual URL was gone. The letter was still there, the press release, but all reference to the Hodges and Christ alignment was purged. And it was specifically switched from uh, the Hodges to the ministry leaders, from Christ alignment to the ministry. They even left a letter that the Hodges had written in this same press release. But the letter, they purged all reference to about who it was from. They purged reference to Ben Fitzgerald. I don't know if this was intentional or not, but the other thing that I noticed is that they purged uh, the spelling of the word color, uh, which I realize seems trivial, but it the press release originally had the, the UK Australian version of the OUR, and this new one had the version, the US version of OR, um, which in light of all the other changes, the impression I'm getting is that they were removing all reference to Australia itself. Um, they purged that specifically because it was, uh, they'd mentioned that Ben was uh, from Australia. They'd purged all of that. And so I place these on my website. You can see them side by side, both completely unedited. And then I have two other versions that are marked up where you can see specifically paragraph by paragraph, every change that I found. Um, the original press release uh, was dated January 5th, 2018. Mm -hmm. The revised one is still listed as January 5th, 2018. Uh, I first saved a copy of this in 2022. When I realized it had changed, I have a saved copy of that from late 2023. So sometime between those two windows, <clears throat> they did this purge. It's possible it was part of a website revamp. But in light of the controversy, I think there was much more to it. Jenny Hodge often complains that the church does not get out into the street and proclaim the gospel. And you know what? She's right. We do need to be sharing the gospel everywhere as we're commanded. But you know what? Christ Alignment isn't doing the book of Acts either, because they're not sharing the name of Jesus as the apostles did when we study the book of Acts. The apostles, to their own peril, they were threatened with arrest. They were threatened with death if they were to say the name of Jesus, Yeshua, and they did it anyway. So what Jenny's doing with her spirit of truth guided meditations is nothing like the book of Acts. 
Also, the apostles never charged anybody money to have people hear the gospel, as Jenny's doing with her Christ Alignment booth with the dollar a minute readings. So what Christ Alignment's doing doesn't have anything to do with the book of Acts, as Pastor Joe Schimmel of Good Fight Ministries explains. I want to challenge all the Christians that are listening out there who don't go on the street, who don't go out into the marketplace, The question I want to ask you is why aren't you guys operating in the power that is in the book of Acts? Hodge's uh, basic premise that we're able to, you know, that she's basically the book of Acts or like living in the book of Acts and uh, pressing the boundaries and so forth. It reminds me a lot of what, you know, Bill Johnson, the head of Bethel, the, you know, one of the leading prophets of the NAR movement has been uh, saying when he talks about how we don't want to be bound, you know, by the Bible, and we need to go off the map and follow this Holy Spirit off the map. Well, this is the interesting thing. The Holy Spirit is one who inspired the Bible. You know, holy men were moved along as they uh, were inspired or carried along by the Holy Spirit. Well, our map is the Word of God, and we don't go off a- away from or veer from the Word of God. God's Word says in Isaiah chapter 8 that if they don't speak according to his word, it's because there's no light in them. What you're doing does not match the Bible. You are uh, contradicting what the Holy Spirit has already revealed. And the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, test the spirits to see whether or not they are from God. We're commanded in the scripture to watch out for those who go off the biblical map. We're commanded in the scripture in uh, chapter 16, verse 17 of Romans uh, where Paul says, I urge you, uh, brethren, uh, to mark those who cause division contrary to sound doctrine uh, and, 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 and who give offense and avoid them. So we're, we're warned to avoid these false teachers. Yet, of course, uh, she's trying to find some loophole to bring in basically Christianized tarot cards, which are categorically condemned as divination and as demonic in the Bible. So by doing so, she'll pick and say, oh, well, this was an interesting miracle here in the book of Acts. Uh, God has some interesting things in scripture that were done at the hands of the apostles that were extraordinary, that were not normative, but they weren't occultic, okay? They're doing occultic practices and then trying to use some uh, out of the norm uh, experiences in scripture to basically uh, create a loophole whereby they can uh, promote basically satanic practices in the church. Jenny argues that her cards cannot possibly be tarot cards because they don't have the tarot symbols. We completely dislike tarot cards. We've never ever used them ever as a team. We don't endorse them in any shape or form. Uh, Tarot cards have at least eight cards in them that have very occultic images in them. In fact, some most of the tarot cards in every deck have occultic images, which which will attract spirits. So we definitely um, recommend to all people not to use tarot cards ever. Well, I used to say the same thing. Most people know the tarot cards is called Rider Waite, that's the classic card. But the thing is that they have symbols in them and words and pictures that are pretty harsh for sensitive people like me. So we've created the first deck of safe tarot cards. It has the same meanings as the ancient system and the differences there are all positive words, all positive visions. You're not going to find one scary picture in this whole deck. Hodges claim, as well as uh you know, Bethel's claim regarding the Uno cards that these are not really tools of divination is ludicrous. I mean, the cards that are based, you know, are based on tarot cards, the same idea as tarot cards are divination cards. They're, uh, divination is is refuted by the Lord God himself in Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 12 uh, as an abomination uh, throughout scripture. And they're divinatory cards that are used to predict the future. Uh, and the Uno cards at the Supernatural School of Ministry used by uh, by Bethel, and now their endorsement of destiny cards. One of the cards, you sit in a circle, you get a red card, you get a green card. Uh, it, they determine who you're supposed to talk to. Uh, the wild card is specifically stated to be a card that you're supposed to tell somebody their destiny. And all this is really, really ridiculous because when you look at these cards, they're not only divinatory, they're not only a t- associated with tarot cards. And that's what, as you know, as one who developed tarot cards with your angel cards, whether it's the destiny cards or using any cards and just picking up Uno cards and then trying to tell people their destiny 
or their future is definitely divinatory. And it's so unbiblical because in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21, it's very clear that uh, that uh, prophecies did not come with the origin of the human will. But holy men spake, it says, as they were moved along, carried along by the Holy Spirit of God. So what happens with Uno cards and many of these uh, divinatory cards, uh, what happens, they sit in a circle and then you get a card and you're, the card dictates who you're supposed to prophesy to and you're going to hope a prophecy just comes to you. And that's the will of man. Uh, and sadly, that opens you up to the demonic realm as well because you're searching for something. God's not going to honor that. So if you speak from the human will and you just make something up, it's a lie. If you get some kind of guidance based on divination, then that's even worse because now you have demonic spirits using you. So either way you cut it, it's demonic at its core and it's unbiblical. So Jenny has said that it is uh, the purpose actually of the destiny card readings, not to bring people to salvation, but to actually lead them to have encounters with God or Jesus. And um, she refers to, you know, God at, with names like the spirit of truth. Um, and, and the, the thing that strikes me about this is that Bethel Church in Reading, they actually do something similar. There, there's an article right now that you can see on their website called Are You More Religious Than Jesus? And it tells about Bethel students going to psychic fairs and posing um, really under like undercover as psychics. And we talk about this in our book, Counterfeit Kingdom, as well. They would avoid saying uh, uh, any, re they would re avoid using any religious terms like Jesus, God, or the Holy Spirit. And then instead they would refer to God as like the spirit of creation. Um, and the reason they do that is they don't want to um, offend new agers or, or people at the psychic affairs, uh, psychic fairs they go to. But this really begs the question, are they actually engaging in evangelism, right? Because Jenny Hodge or, or the people at Bethel that are going to psychic fairs and doing these undercover spirit readings, as they call them, um, you know, they claim that they're in, they're engaging in a creative form of evangelism. They call it prophetic evangelism. Um, but if, if the gospel is not being shared, if the name of Jesus is not being used, if God and the Holy Spirit, you know, if these terms are not being used, then how can this be evangelism at all? Um, and if you actually look at the testimonials that Jenny posts on her Facebook page of people after they have a destiny card reading, um, they're not, they're, they're just sharing these stories of bizarre encounters that they're claiming that they're having with God and revelation they claim they receive, for example, revelation of what their future family looks like or, or things like that. But it, it has nothing to do with the gospel, what just what Jesus did on the cross, you know, so that we can have rec forgiveness of our sins and reconciliation with God. It's nothing to do with that. Um, and so, so that's very concerning. And I don't see how that's actually evangelism at all. And this next clip, it just breaks my heart because here's Jenny Hodge interviewing a man. It sounds like she did the actual reading for him. And uh, she mentions he agrees that he's a practicing Buddhist. And so this would have been an amazing uh, opportunity to evangelize about the narrow path that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one gets to the Father except through Jesus, not through Buddha. Uh, but she takes him through this meditation to meet this spirit of truth figure. And listen to the man describe what that figure looked like to him. And this is not the Jesus of the Bible. This is not the real Jesus. He's describing a man who he says is the brother of Gabriel. And our Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is not the brother of a created angel. Gabriel, who is in the Bible, in the book of Daniel, and also in the Annunciation, there's no way that our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is co-eternal with God the Father and with God the Holy Spirit, there's no way that Jesus, the real Jesus, is the brother of a created being, an angel, Gabriel. Now, we know that he's got half-brothers in the Bible because of his earthly mother, Mary. His father, though, is the Holy Spirit, and he is not brothers with Gabriel. So right off the bat, you know, this is not the real Jesus that this man 
was um, guided to see, even though Jenny seems so excited that he mentioned that he's from the clan of Judah, and, and Jenny tries to correct that to the tribe of Judah to make it sound like it's Jesus. But then the man mentions that his um, vision was of a man who had black wings. So the fact that this man is saying that he's met some uh, person who is a messenger, a messenger in, of course, in Greek, Koine Greek in the Bible means angel, and that he met this man who is a brother of Gabriel, the angel, who's got black wings. It's one more of many pieces of evidence that we're seeing that these folks are not meeting the real Jesus, and only the real Jesus can offer salvation for our souls. You're here with Christ the Lime, Yes. <laughs> and we just had an amazing reading, didn't we, with you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you are a practicing Buddhist? Yes. Yes, yes. In the encounter, and your cards were absolutely incredible today. Okay. In the encounter, can you just tell us what you, um, you saw the spirit of truth? Yes. It came to you dressed in a blue and velvet robe? Yes. And you thought he was an ancient healer or something, you said? He was a messenger. A messenger. Yeah. And can you tell us what he said to you? What he, what, who he is? Um, he said he's from the clan. He said he's um, basically uh, the brother of Gabriel. Yes. And he's uh, from the clan of Judah. <laughs> the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah. And uh, yeah, he had, he had black wings. Come on. Very strong, yeah. very strong presence, very strong warrior presence. It's so awesome. Yeah. And you it's so beautiful because he answered your question today so clearly. But that's also That is amazing. I just can't believe <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. That's also because of you though, because you hear so good. You're hearing I, I'm, so I'm really good. surprised. You about are. It. Really. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So thank you for that amazing thank you. <laughs> And we've encouraged you today, you're going to go home. Yes. And you're going to have dreams in the night in color, and you're going to have encounters that are going to be as mind-blowing as this. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm thanks. looking forward to that. Thanks, Zane. Thank you. Thank you. If they lead them in a guided visualization type prayer, um, first of all, that's a problem right there because that is unbiblical. Uh, that is really a form of hypnosis. Um, this is something I've addressed many, many times in my ministry for a long time. Uh, and I, I, of course, did this when I was in the New Age. And I even guided other people sometimes in guided visualizations. Uh, so what you're doing is you're you're helping the person to open their mind to any influence that wants to come in. And you're also, by the power of suggestion, uh, you know, giving them uh, a suggestion in their mind to see something. And so they probably will see it from just from that. But the, also, if especially if these people that they're uh, talking to are not believers, these these if these people are unsafe people, uh, they're very open to contact from fallen angels, uh, which is what I call demons. So. If they're open to the contact of, with fallen angels and they're in this state of mind, the chances are very high that that's what they're going to encounter. They're going to encounter a fallen angel, no matter how this fallen angel may appear. You know, it may appear as any, it may appear as a nice angel. It may appear as Jesus. It may, it may appear as, you know, Mary. I mean, who knows? Um, so that's one, that's one of the, First problems right there is that they're opening this person up to false con false visions and contact with fallen angels. The other thing is not saying the word Jesus and calling him the spirit of truth. This is very troubling because Jesus is not a spirit. Um, Jesus is God, it's fully God and fully man. So uh, God, yes, the Bible says God is spirit, which means God is not in a corporal form. He's not in a body. He's infinite and everywhere. But that's that's what that means. And Jesus is God, but Jesus added humanity to his deity when he incarnated and was born in Bethlehem. 
And when he resurrected, he bodily resurrected and he's in with his father in the kingdom of God with his father in heaven. And he's in bodily form. So to call him a spirit or suggest the spirit of truth is Jesus is very, is heretical. It's just heretical because it denies the true nature of Jesus Christ as revealed in God's word. Jenny Hodge calls people names when they push back on her practices with the cards and the readings. So she calls them Calvinists. Sometimes she says they have a religious spirit. You know, and any time that someone criticized her, do you have a religious spirit? I got told I have a religious spirit. I don't know how I have a religious spirit. I'm trying to still trying to work it out. But it's, you know, what am I being a religious spirit about? Because I'm telling you that this is not, you know, where's the gospel? Oh, we're not here to preach the gospel. Then why are you calling you? Like, it was two messages. So she'd say something to the church mm-hmm. and then to the world she'd say the truth of what she was actually really saying. I commiserate. I know how she feels because Jenny Hodge calls a lot of us names. It's called an ad hominem attack. It's a logical fallacy. Instead of addressing the issue at hand, you go right to attacking the person as a way of diverting the conversation. And so anytime someone um, will, you know, hold up NAR teachings to scripture to evaluate them, they'll ask if they can be supported by scripture. Um, It's very common for people in NAR to accuse you of having a religious spirit simply for doing that. And, um, and of course they use all kinds of other names too. Um, they, they'll call you a Jezebel. Um, you know, they'll say that you're mean spirited or you're a heresy hunter, um, name calling, you know, this, this is, is labeling their critics with these disparaging labels and, and literally demonizing their critics when they say they have a religious spirit in order to keep people from, from listening to, uh, their valid concerns. Using cards is not normally part of a Christian ministry, especially if you're not using the name of Jesus and you're calling him a the spirit of truth that New Agers can't even understand. She's calling the Bible that ancient Jewish text. No one knows what that means. It's not the gospel is the point. Since Jenny Hodge insists that she has to look like a New Age psychic in order to reach New Agers, And she compares it, as you can see on this post on the screen from Facebook, she compares it to going to Burning Man and evangelizing to New Agers. So it seems very appropriate to bring on our brother in Christ and good friend, Carl Tykrib, who does go to Burning Man every year, and he does evangelize to New Agers there. And in this next clip, you'll hear Carl talk about why He absolutely does not try to look or sound like a New Ager as he talks to New Agers about the gospel at the Burning Man event. Take a listen. Hi, my name is Carl Teichrib, and I am the author of the book Game of Gods, The Temple of Man in the Age of Reenchantment. I've been engaged as a researcher, a Christian researcher, in trying to understand global trends since the early 1990s, full-time since 1997. And along the way, I have attended a range of events. That includes things like going to Wicca and witchcraft events, um, going to New Age events, uh, going to the Parliament of World Religions, places like that. And we have a very specific ministry, a very specific uh, calling in terms of outreach to Burning Man. So, Carl, you've been to a number of New Age and Wiccan and occultic events, including Burning Man. And you do evangelism there. You share the gospel there. Is that correct? Yes, I'm there for two reasons. Um, In terms of of the research side, to try to understand the worldview, where we are also engaged in outreach. And Burning Man, well, we actually have a, a more of a focus of let's have those conversations for Jesus Christ. Let's actually engage in reaching out with the gospel message. I love that. Thank you. And and so one of the things that um, Jenny Hodge and her team of card readers do is they go to New Age festivals. Um, and sh- while she's there, she says it's important to assimilate and to be like the New Agers and dress like them and to have these colorful tents, as you can see on the screen here, to look like the New Age psychic booths. And she says that the, this is the only way to attract New Agers to her booth. Now, you've had booths at Burning Man. Do you think that's true? No. You know, we have a very plain booth. We have a, a tent. Uh, back, 
uh, we're pretty uh, we're pretty nondescript. It's just basically here's our ten. So no, we don't have to dress like them. Um, in fact, that Burning Man that's really interesting because the dress code is everything from well, no dress to very flowery, very extravagant costumes, uh, the the neo hippie, new agey kind of stuff you can buy on Amazon and away you go, and just kind of dress and look and, and feel like the same. For the most part, we're just, I mean, we're just dressing normal. We're, we're just, you know, one of the guys who's on our team, Brian, it's shorts and a shirt. Uh, for myself, it's it's pants and a shirt. And we don't have to emulate. We don't have to uh, sit and mirror what they're doing or what they're saying. We don't have to do any of that. In fact, we just have to be people. We just have to be normal human beings and have normal conversations. And that's what we do. And we have lots of conversations. That's so refreshing. Now, as you know, um, Jenny Hodge has instructed her card readers never to say the name Jesus, but to instead call him the spirit of truth and to not use any Christian vocabulary such as Bible, such as repentance, sin, hell. Uh, she doesn't even use the word pray. I won't use the word evangelism. And yet she says she's sharing the gospel. Do you think that's possible? I In could that would be very difficult if you're not going to use, if you're, if you're not going to introduce who Jesus is, the problem of our sin nature, the need for repentance. If you're not going to introduce any of that, like what are, what are you talking about then? It, 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 it's obviously, I mean, it may be appealing at some level of the self, but sorry, it's missing the point. Listen, we were, when we were at Burning Man, and it, it, sometimes it's simple. Sometimes it's really simple. Um, an example, when we were at Burning Man in 2023, one of our teammates, he does, um, he does blacksmithing as a hobby. He brought along a bunch of crosses. And at one point, we were at uh, an art piece that was now being burned in front of us. Ironically, it was the Tower of Babel or the Chapel of Babel. That's just the way that that world wor works. And uh, he ended up having a conversation with the lady beside him. We don't know her background. We don't know her at all. She mentioned something about her being on a journey. Um, our, our, our team, we're all tired. It's midnight. Brian turns around and he ends up giving her a cross and just simply says to her, trust Jesus. And Doreen, she breaks. I mean, she breaks. Tears are streaming down her face. She's grabbing Brian's arm. She clutches my arm. She clutches her other team member, Audrey's arm, and she's looking at us in our eyes. We don't know. We never had a conversation beyond that, but... She broke and was just, the tears were streaming. And then it must have been her husband or boyfriend gave her a little nudge and up they went and away they went. We have no idea. Was it a little seed that was dropped into her life? We don't know what her background was. It may have been. Very simple. But the name Jesus is there. In fact, trust Jesus. Here's the cross. She obviously got it. Something inside went click. And then a few days before that, I was on a, a great big art piece, uh, a large structure, having a great conversation with a man, and we ended up go, having a deep dive into Psalm 51, David's model of repentance. And we brought all that in. We had, I don't know, 45-minute conversation We're using Scripture, talking about sin, talking about trusting God, trusting Christ, what David did how he could rely on nothing more than God's righteousness, not our own. Did the man run away from me? Not at all. We ended up having a, a big hug at the end of it, and, and it, was, it was a really beautiful conversation, planting a seed. I'm looking forward to seeing what the harvest is. We all want the harvest. And sometimes we just are hesitant to plant some seeds, and sometimes you need to plant seeds, but those seeds have to be seasoned with truth and with grace, but with truth. In August of 2017, this was a month before I was actually saved, I was being called out of the new age and I was making videos about it, but still using cards at this moment. Um, so Jenny Hodge posts a glowing uh, posts about me and asks people to pray for me. That's really interesting because a few years later, when I was talking about this on my videos that, hey, what you're doing is almost exactly like I was doing when I was in the new age. Jenny didn't like that. So she posted that I am dividing. And she said, I'm being used by the devil to divide the body. And then Chris Rosebro, who's made a lot of videos about 
Bethel and uh, Christ Alignment, in fact, helped me with this video, sending me a lot of material. And so Chris Rosebow posted right after Jenny Hodge um, said I was dividing the body. He said, someone needs to remind Jenny Hodge, the woman who runs Christ Alignment and practices, quote, Christian fortune telling, that Jude 19 teaches that it is the false teachers who cause divisions in the body of Christ, not those who expose false teachers. According to scripture, Doreen is not the one causing division, Jenny Hodge is. And here's Jude 19 for reference on the screen. So that's really interesting. Jenny Hodge of Christ Alignment pushes back on anyone who dares to criticize her card usage, saying that they are Calvinists. So now, now you're wearing some things. I'm just curious, do you wear these things all the time or do you wear these just for the fairs in the market? <laughs> I do. We, we, act, we get asked this very much all the time. In fact, we've been so accused by um, the Calvinists of purposely trying to look like this. But the funny thing is everyone on the team, most of them are from a New Age background. And um, we like looking like this. And I do look like this every day. And we purposely want to look psychic because we want to attract um, only people that go to psychic and go and do tarot reading. We don't want to attract any Christians whatsoever. Now, in the process of you giving them this destiny reading, I mean, do you, yeah. does, does Yeshua come up in that conversation or how does that? <laughs> Uh, we call him the spirit of truth. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, what we if... don't use any Christian lingo at all. Yeah. In fact, the word the word pray is banned off the team, and and we really don't even like the term um, evangelism. I was I was just sent an email this morning by possibly a Calvinist. I'm not sure, but they said, "Well, where's your mission statement?" And besides that, she seems to have confused the term Calvinist with cessationist. Calvinism is a theology about soteriology, which is how does God save people, where cessationism is the question, are the spiritual gifts still for today? Now, it's true that a lot of Calvinists, Reformed people, are cessationists, but there's also Calvinists who are what they call continuationists. Continuationism means that you believe that the spiritual gifts are still for today. Examples of continuationist Calvinists would include Sam Storms, John Piper, and Wayne Grudem. So it's a false dichotomy to say that just because you're a Calvinist, you're against the spiritual gifts. And also, some of the folks that I've interviewed for this video are continuationists, believe that the spiritual gifts are still for today, and they're still against this particular practice that Jenny Hodge is using under the guise that it is evangelism while not sharing the gospel because she's not talking about Jesus or repentance or sin or hell. She's leading them on a new age type of guided visualization meditation to meet something she calls the spirit of truth that would confuse a new ager and cause them to stumble into further new age deception. Uh, regarding Ginny's claim that I'm a Calvinist, I've never said that's my stance. So I don't know where she got that from. Um, but it's a common tactic used by NAR leaders. They will accuse their critics of all being Calvinist or of all being cessationist and denying that the miraculous gifts continue for today, even though that's not true. Uh, many of their critics are not Calvinists, and many of their critics are not cessationists. Many, in fact, are continuationists and believe the miraculous gifts uh, like prophecy and healing and speaking in tongues do continue today. So, but they're trying to get their critics or their followers to dismiss critics by slapping them with these labels because they know that many of their followers um, disagree with Calvinists or disagree with cessationists. And so they think if they just slap you with this label and say, oh, you're a Calvinist, you're a cessationist, um, even if those labels don't apply, um, then that will get their followers not not to listen to valid concerns um, about their teachings and practices. Um, and um, the truth is, even if their critics are Calvinists or cessationists, uh, really, uh, she's still committing a logic. They're committing a logical fallacy, the genetic fallacy, right? Because uh, when that 
when that fallacy, when someone uses that logical fallacy, what they're what they're doing is they're not evaluating uh, the content of the actual arguments, but they're evaluating the source of the arguments. So they're saying um, that would be like someone saying, um, you know, well, you can't say smoking is unhealthy because you smoke yourself. That's the genetic fallacy, because if the person makes arguments that show that smoking is unhealthy, it really doesn't matter if they smoke themselves or not, if the arguments are valid. Right. And so um, so, you know, by by just saying, well, you're a Calvinist, you know, someone's a Calvinist, someone shouldn't listen to you or a cessationist there. She's discouraging her followers from from actually listening to the actual arguments being made. Um, and what's really telling to me is, uh, you know, that Ingenie's post about me or or you or or um, in these NAR leaders uh, response when they engage in name calling like that, they're actually not engaging with the actual arguments that the critics are raising. And that's that's the key point. I am a continuationist, not a cessationist. I'm not a Calvinist, although I love my Calvinistic brothers and sisters. I stand with all my brothers and sisters, including whether they're Calvinist or non-Calvinist, against the false uh, counterfeit revival known as what's happening at Bethel Reading and the New Apostolic Reformation, the destiny cards, which are now on, you know, promoted even on Bethel's, uh, you know, website, which they tried to distance themselves from in the past. Uh, their leaders will talk about how, you know, will, you know, they'll talk about how we're using the divine energy of the Christ spirit. And, you know, yourself coming out of the New Age movement, myself, you know, being a former New Ager, and I've studied it for years. And so they use this language. But if, uh, first of all, if they don't use the name of Jesus, you know, he's the only name given under heaven, whereby we must be saved. It's not leading people to Christ. If they use the name of Jesus, it's still a black eye because they're mixing darkness and light, which is forbidden in scripture. So either way you cut it, it's blasphemous. It's unchristian. It's occultic. It's from the kingdom of darkness. It's not from the third heaven, as they like to say. It's from the pit of hell. But look at the highlighted um, phrase on the screen here. That's currently, as of we're filming this January 2024, Bethel Redding says that uh, about these cards, of course, as we rightly assumed, they are not using Christian tarot cards, nor telling the future with cards. But take a look at this clip of a Christ alignment card reader talking to a client who's filming her and she is saying that this card reading will be about the past the present and the future just like divinatory card readings are always about welcome to christ alignment so um anyone that um, does a reading hears from the spirit realm which exists outside of time and space so we're hearing from the christ spirit um, therefore, it's possible for us to hear about your past, your present, and your future. Present and your future. Doing divination about the past, present, and future is condemned in the Bible. That is divination. That is, as we see in Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12, for example. And you can go to the New Testament, Acts 16 to Acts 19. And you can see that this is a condemned practice of idolatry, sorcery, divination, and interpreting signs and omens. This is also exactly what I used to do as a card reader. And the whole time saying that I was getting the message from God and God's angels and archangels and putting down psychics as they got their messages from lower energies or spirit guides, exactly like Jenny Hodge defends herself saying. Okay. But it was frustrating because in the end, I couldn't justify it because I was being complicit with what was going on in the sense I wasn't preaching. Yes, I was trying to get them there. Um, and look, there were a few people that did were very touched um, and started looking into the Bible. Well, the Bible is very clear that we're not supposed to use divination or any kind of fortune telling. So any anything that the cards would be doing about predicting the future. We Some of the really people mean. that we've seen the videos on um, have been given readings about their future about the kind of job and that they're going to get married, they're going to have kids. So it sounds like you weren't doing that, but some of the readers are. The gift, the gift of salvation is free, but mm -hmm. we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling and that, right. that pick up our cross and follow Jesus. So not everything comes to us 
like that. And I think that was the problem. My my biggest issue with Christ Alignment 2 that really concerned me was the kind of people they had on the ministry team. Mm. So, you know, for me, I mean, I'm a mature Christian. You know, I could sort of take things in my stride and I wasn't just taken here and there by, by, by everything. But there was people that with themselves were really broken, really broken. They were young Christians and they were ministering to people. Now, we know, but if you're a broken vessel and, God, and you're trying to minister to someone, what do you think comes out in that? It's not mm-hmm. going to be pure. Water. Right. It's it's broken. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that's something that's real. It's like, well, how and that you and I used to say to Jenny, like, what, you know, and she would complain to me as well about, oh, she's like, oh, that person's off. That person needs healing that person and I'm like well you're the one that brought them on the team so one of the contentions that Jenny Hodge uses to justify using cards to witness to new agers is that God used casting lots in both the old and the new testament and the Urim and the Thummim in the old testament as you'll see in this clip please take a look and in the old testament they the part of the covenant was to use the Urim and Thummim which are yeah. the stones and that was yeah. actually ordained by God. And you go, hang on a minute, does God ordain stones like divination by stones or, or predicting the future by stones? Well, yes, he did. Yes, he does. And he can. Yeah. And So joining me today is Don Vino, the president of Midwest Christian Outreach, and also Marcia Montenegro, who is the founder of Christian Answers for the New Age and author of Spellbound, which is a book that discusses these issues. Don and Marcia have witnessed to New Agers for decades. And I'm going to ask you both, Marcia and Don, thank you for being here, to react to Jenny's contention that because this was in the Old Testament with Urim and Thummim and casting a lots in both Old and New Testament, therefore she's saying, ipso facto, I can use cards. What we do know is that they were used for basically two functions true false uh or guilty innocent it was a choice between one or the other we find that in the old testament we find that even in the casting of lots it was uh uh matthias was chosen of the two possibilities they cast lots similar we have in um for Samuel 1441, uh, as they're sorting through the nation to find out which tribe is guilty, which part of that tribe is guilty, and it narrowed it all the way down to the choice of uh, Saul and Jonathan. So it was, these two are guilty, everyone else is innocent. Innocent, guilty. Uh, they also used it for the dividing of the land, which tribe would get which portion of land. And so it was a selection process. Only two possibilities, guilty, innocent, uh, yes, no. That's basically what it was used for. Uh, It is not used for any sort of witnessing tool. And uh, some other differences uh, are that the Uman and Thuman were ordained by the Lord. God ordained these and specifically set that up. And it was only done by the high priest. So we don't know for sure what the Uman and Thuman were, although apparently they were two objects and some scholars think they were stones, maybe a black stone and maybe a white stone, but they don't really know because God chooses not to tell us what they are, which is probably a good idea. (laughs) I think it's probably an excellent idea. Otherwise, people would be going around trying to imitate it and say, I have the Uman and Thuman, you know. So, um, So we don't even know what they are. But since God came up with this and told the high priest how to use it and when to use it, that's very different from the divination that God is forbidding in scripture, which uh, are methods that were used by uh, the pagan worshipers of false gods to determine the will of their gods or to communicate with their gods. All that kind of stuff where you're trying to get these meanings using objects or get information using objects is occult divination and God completely and strictly forbids that kind of divination. So what Jenny Hodge is doing, she's not using the cards like the Uman and Thuman were used. That is a category that belongs to 
a God ordained activity, a God directed activity, whereas using the cards falls into the area of divination that God has forbidden. And casting lots um, is uh, also something pagans do, you see in the scripture. But as far as the use of Christians using it, the last time cast, casting lots, and I think maybe it's the only time mentioned in the New Testament as far as Christians go, is what Don referenced, uh, choosing uh, Matthias. And after that, that was before the Holy Spirit was sent to indwell believers at Pentecost. And once that happened, you see no more use of casting lots at all. It is not referred to at all by believers. And um, I think the only place may be when Paul was on the ship with the pagan sail sailors and they cast lots. But it's not used by Christians uh, after they have the Holy Spirit. So it's very, very clear if you look at the whole of Scripture uh, and look at what she's doing in light of, of the Uman and Thuman, what they were and what divination is, and Christians not using the casting of lots um, after the Holy Spirit came, you, you see that, that you cannot justify what she's doing. And so we see even today with Jenny Hodge that people are going to try to use that to justify uh, a practice that is actually a form of divination. And that's where it's so important to really know the whole of Scripture, the whole council of Scripture. It also seems to me um, that this is sort of a form of deception that she is employing to try to sneak up on New Agers uh, with, a, I'm not saying it's not a good intention to share the gospel, but mm -hmm. it's means. But, but she's not sharing the gospel. She's she's guiding them on a, a visualization meditation to see something she calls the spirit of truth. She doesn't mention Jesus, Yeshua, sin, repentance, hell. Marsha, witnesses to New Agers. I uh, <laughs> witness to New Agers. Uh, I go to weird things like Paganicon 2023 and 2024, where I am with witches and Wiccans and Druids. And um, we don't try to trick them into something. Right. Right. I, I, we ask them, what is it that you believe and why do you believe it? That gives them an opportunity to then respond uh, and in the response gives us the next question to ask, mm -hmm. which oddly enough is how we find Jesus and Paul mostly operating. They would ask questions and then follow up from the, based on the responses. We see that with Paul in Acts 17. Uh, he's familiar with what they believe. He quotes from their poets and philosophers but he doesn't give the pretense that he's doing the same things that they are doing. He gets to the gospel with that. Right, right. It is a form. I agree with Don's point. That's a good point because it's as though she's using these cards because obviously that would interest a lot of new agers because uh, they would be that, you know, they're used to tarot cards and there are other kinds of cards that can be used that way too. It's not just tarot. And so that's going to appeal to them or interest them. And she's using that to draw them in. But like Don says, you don't need to do a new age type practice or something that looks new agey to draw the new ager in, you know, and that's that's a deception because it makes the the new ager think that this is going to be a card reading like a tarot card reading. And as she's doing it, they may even still think that because if she's not using, <laughs> she's not really talking about Jesus explicitly um, and not giving the gospel explicitly, it's going to be very confusing right. to a new ager because they're going to be like, well, what's up with this? What kind of reading is this? Especially if she says she's a Christian and, and there's the appearance or the presumption that she's a Christian, then the new ager is going to wonder well, then what is this? This is like Christian tarot reading. And that's, of course, um, misinformation and very misleading, which is a form of deception. Yeah, and no, and, no such thing as a Christian tarot reading. And there's no such thing as that. So no such thing as a Christian card reading as a new ager would think of it. 
So basically, it's a form of deception. And one thing you really want to be careful of when you're witnessing to unbelievers is that you do not want to have any kind of anything that's deceptive, because that will just be a barrier, not to mention it's, 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 you know, going against God, but it's a, going to be a barrier and it's going to result in something unfruitful or negative if you try to use deception in your in your appeal especially like with new agers because they will they will know it and you know then they may never be interested in talking to a christian again so you know it's it's really it's really bad for um it's a bad witness for christ to do that agreed the bible says do not distort the gospel right here in second corinthians 4 it says Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the things hidden because of shame, not walking in trickery, nor distorting the word of God, but by the open proclamation of the truth, commending ourselves to every person's conscience in the sight of God. In other words, it's not up to us to try to change the language of the gospel, to go undercover, and to try to trick people into coming to Christ. It doesn't work that way. That is not trusting God's word by doing that. Jesus commanded us to share the gospel with all nations. He didn't say to go undercover and to try to trick people. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And we can't be watering it down or trying to entertain or fit like the world in order to do evangelism. Listen to the story about Amy Carmichael, who was a 20th century Irish missionary to India. She learned to reject some methods of winning the attention of unbelievers, which some evangelicals were adopting. She was told, for example, that more girls would be drawn to her meetings if she only offered lessons in sewing or embroidery and administered only a mild dose of the gospel. By that means, Amy was told, more would listen to her speak about Jesus. But Amy did not believe in such indirect dealing with people. And Amy said, I would rather have two who came in earnest than a hundred who came to play. We have no time to play with souls like this. It is not by ceremonial tea making and flower arranging, not by wood, chrysanthemum making and foreign sewing learning, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. That's the bottom line. We don't have time to fool around by trying to conform to the world. When you watch these video clips from people who just got a, a card reading, notice what they say and what they don't say. In these clips, you'll never hear them say the name Jesus or Yeshua. They'll talk about a spirit guide that they saw in a vision during the card reading. They'll talk about maybe the spirit of truth, but do they know that that's Jesus? Jenny Hodge argues that the name Christ alignment should be enough because the word Christ is in there. And she says that the card readers say the name of Christ as they sit down with the client. But as a former New Ager, that word Christ is equated with Christ consciousness, which is a new thought, new age term and concept that is not biblical. It's not the gospel. Unless someone explains who Jesus, Yeshua, was in his earthly ministry and why he had to die for us, it's not the gospel. Just at least to say uh, what she experienced. So uh, I saw what looked like originally like a cosmos, yeah. and then it starts swirling around yeah. and keeps going. So it's almost like you're going into like a tornado type thing, but yeah. the lights are coming around it, and it just keeps on going. It's like a, a deep, dark hole. It just keeps swirling and swirling and swirling. Was it a good feeling? Like a good? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I could have stayed there for hours. It's almost like a. It's like, it's like a light show. Just oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. Wow, nice. wow. Deeper revelations. Deeper revelations. Yeah. So yeah. the funny thing is, I didn't record the other people, but I've had so many people sit down today and see that whirlwind. Wow. So, yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much. You're welcome.
Hi Daphne, you're in with Christ Alignment of Mind, Body, Spirit. How did your reading with Warwick go? My reading was amazing. It was quite intuitive. He yes. takes you on the journey and allows you to tap into your own inner knowing. So wow. it was amazing. The session was amazing and well worth it. Come on. Down. Thank you so much. Tell me about your experience here at the Presence Test. Who wants to start? It was really clarifying. Um, yeah, it was very clarifying, very confirming of things of checking in where I'm on the right path and um, also just being able to connect in with um, the different tools that each um, aspect that I have, what they mean and how they actually interconnect and that was really great. Awesome. At Christ Alignment, in at Mind, Body, Spirit, and you just had a reading with Daryl. Yep. Tell us about this electricity thing. Yeah, so we were doing the um, reading, reading yeah. encounter. Yeah, encounter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, I was, a white feather. Yeah, I had a white feather in a red box. Yes, and beautiful. When I picked it up, I felt a breeze like on my face, and then. Oh, you lightning. actually felt the yeah, breeze on your yeah. face? And then, like, Electric shoot up through my fingers. It was Electricity, amazing. Yeah, like energy. Yeah, like, and you've never felt that from anything no, like no, this it was before, eh? It's uh, Mind Body Spirit Melbourne, and this is a beautiful Megan. He just had an amazing encounter and card reading. So, Megan, were the cards accurate for you? Absolutely. Um, past, present, future—it all really resonated with me. Um, Afterwards, when we contacted the the high, the spirit, spirit truth, of truth, the spirit yeah. of truth, I felt like I, I didn't even remember that I was here. I lifted up higher, and I went to this place, and I was so clear with my message. My mind went to the back of my, I wasn't in my thinking mind. So instead, these people who are in the new age are going into a booth, and they're spending 20 to $30 for a 30 minute session with volunteers who are not themselves paid and have this supposed encounter with the spirit of truth while they're in this tent. Here is a post reading interview that Jenny Hodge put on her social media on August 20th, 2023. Jenny said that Seth had a really good encounter with the spirit of truth and received him into his heart. Seth received a horn as a gift, which he felt to put around his belt and gave him a sense of security. Now, remember as you're watching Seth's post-reading testimony that he has just been guided on a meditation to meet this spirit of truth and to receive a gift from him. And that's exactly the script that we used in the New Age. As you listen to Seth, notice whether he mentions Jesus or gives any indication that this was a salvific moment for him, leading him to repent, leading him to give his life to Jesus as his Lord and Savior. How was the reading for you? It was great. It was yeah. um, things that I didn't know before, and yeah. I appreciate the guidance. So yes. it is something I'll take on for the future. Yeah, and your answers were... Yeah, my answers were good. Were good. Um, yeah. Some things I didn't expect, like right. a horn. So yeah, wonderful. good to know what it means. Yeah. And, and um, what was... Sorry. So the spirit of truth revealed to you as a... As um, a leader? Yeah. So, yeah, and yeah. hopefully yeah. I lead well and yeah. I have a horn now. So wonderful. You can take that into battle. Yeah, great. Good. Thank you, Seth. Thank you. And sadly, Seth did not mention Jesus once, nor did he give any indication that this was a life-changing moment for him leading to salvation. Now, of course, only God knows his heart. We are deeply concerned that this is making things worse for those New Agers because now they have a spirit guide. Now they have a new spirit guide. Now they have spent 20 or $30 of their hard-earned money. Now they have thought that they went to a Christian and they thought that, okay, Christians use cards just like psychics do, so it's fine. To that point, Jenny Hodge will argue that we're very different than psychics because we're getting our messages from the third heaven realm, from God himself, higher up. And the psychics 
they just get their message from the lower realms and the spirit guides. Well, you know what? I used to use the same pushback with people who argued about my old teachings and card readings. In this next clip where I'm giving an annual card reading for 2015, notice how I incorporate Christian language into this reading. And I was spiritually blind back then. It was before I was saved. I didn't know that you can't call on God. You can't pray for God's protection or blessings for a sinful activity like card readings. You'll notice with this card reading that my theology and teachings are decidedly new age and they're false teachings. This was back when I thought that I could blend Christianity with new age. And of course, that can never happen because they are polar opposites. And so I didn't know that back then. I really thought I was a Christian. I really thought I was doing God's work with these cards. And it reminds me so much of what I see Jenny doing. Now, I can't know her motives, only God does. But this is so similar, you guys, of this Christian terminology used while doing a new age and sinful activity, such as card reading. I've been praying over these cards. And I'm asking the Lord to send all of us guidance, lessons, and blessings for 2015. And I'm going to be drawing 12 cards and talking with you about this. But before I draw those cards, I want to give you some messages that have already been coming to me about this new year. So if you see something in here and you want to take it to an even higher level, pray for help. And God will only show us what we are needing to know. There's 44 cards in here, and I'm going to draw 12. Okay, here we go. For January, the January card is beautiful because it is Archangel Michael, and it is, there's nothing to worry about. And I love that there is a dove with an olive branch here because that's such a symbol of a sign of forthcoming land or peace or prosperity. So even if your prayers right at the moment don't seem to be answered, this dove with the olive branch lets you know that there's nothing to worry about and that it's coming to you in divine timing. And, and usually the, the dove means very soon. The dove is also a symbol of your higher self, of Holy Spirit, and of course of peace. And the card here says you are safe. And this situation is under perfect control of divine providence and universal order. It says only infuse loving thoughts and emotions into the situation to ensure that the highest possible outcome flows effortlessly to and through you. So what the card is saying that the, the situations of January are definitely under God's protection and keep it that way because your free will does influence everything. God is powerful, but God respects our free will choices. Stay positive, my friend. You see, for over 20 years, I traveled around the world giving what I now know are blasphemous heretical workshops where I taught people how to use these so-called angel cards. I know now they are demon cards, and I apologize and repent for it. I spent many years going to Australia to teach a course there of how to read angel cards for which I repent and apologize because I was unknowingly teaching people how to connect with demons, fallen angels. As I did the research for this video, I began to have compassion for Jenny Hodge. As you'll see in the next clip, which makes me cringe with embarrassment for her, Michael Brown is interviewing her on his program and trying to help Jenny Hodge to share the gospel because a caller had just asked her, would you share the gospel? And Jenny Hodge is struggling, as you'll see in this clip. And it occurred to me while watching this, maybe she doesn't even know the gospel. I didn't know the gospel. But here's what I want to ask you. I would like for you to... Preach to me the full gospel as if I was a sinner looking to find Jesus. I would like you to tell me the full gospel of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. in accordance with mm -hmm. the scriptures. That's what I want. Yeah. If you 
what, yeah, that's what that's what you want, and that's how I became a Christian too, from the full gospel, and that's how they do as well. But they have to do it by invitation. Jesus doesn't force people to become Christians just by by us telling them stuff. They have to want to become and be ready in their heart at that stage to become a proper Christian. All right, so it's Jenny, right? If, if someone says, "What must I do to be saved?" I understand. I'm, I need yeah. God. What must I do? That's what Cherry's asking. What do you tell that person? We tell them the same. We just say, "What's in the Bible?" Right? So we're just saying, "What's in the Bible?" We're not altering. No, no. Just go ahead. But, but people need to, the- Jenny. You have to understand. There's there are people that love the Lord, yeah. that love the things of the Spirit, that have major questions, and what and what we, they need to, tell you you tell them make believe yeah. sherry is that person so don't say we say what's in the uh-huh. bible tell preach to her what you would preach to to that person <laughs> well, i would say to sherry um before you accept jesus in your life you're going to have to get rid of all other spirit guides and you're going to have to actually repent and get rid of all the practices that you've done and you're going to need a full-on um, encounter with him as well. So would you like to accept him into your life? All right, That's and, the first thing I would say. Oh, okay. And then what? when you say you have to have an encounter with him, what does that mean? Um, well, we're, we're just I don't really believe just saying the sinner's prayer instantly makes you instantly a born-again person. Mm -hmm. I've seen street evangelists do this over and over again, and then we've met those same people on the street, and they're not born again. No, no, we we agree that just saying a sinner's prayer doesn't save unless there's true faith put in God, but do you mean they have to have some type of spiritual encounter? They have to see something or feel something? No. No, in their heart, they, well, it it seems pointless explaining to listeners who are Christians what, how to get born again, because the listeners probably already are born again, so they know how they came to Jesus, it's exactly the same, and everyone on the team, our team has had a personal experience with Jesus, for me personally, I saw him when I was 22. Um, and so everyone has had a very real and very personal experience with Jesus Christ. And you had an encounter with that as well, right? Or just a, like, I don't know about an encounter, but a belief yeah. system that the Lord spoke to you, which spoke healing to that maybe ungodly belief, uh, belief or this, this place where you didn't know what was going to happen on yeah. the other side. You had an amazing encounter about that you shared, right? If you want to share that story, that'd be awesome. You mean to me personally? Yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, yes, I did. Well, I actually saw him. I saw him in physical form standing in front of me, but I couldn't see his face because it was too bright. There was just like white light coming from his face, and I was unable to move for about three hours. Wow. So I was stuck. I was stuck. Where and my were friends you? all Where left we- the building, and I was still <laughs> stuck. Like his mother, Jenny. Ben Fitzgerald also claims that his salvation came from having an encounter with Jesus. On the AwakeningEurope.com Bethel Reading website, Ben Fitzgerald's bio says, Ben met Jesus in an encounter that deeply changed him in 2002 whilst he was dealing drugs. So both Ben and Jenny believe that salvation comes from an encounter with Jesus. No wonder the Christ Alignment readings are so focused on this experiential New Age guided meditation practice of trying to get people to have an encounter with a spirit of truth. That's not the gospel, but because Jenny and and Ben believe they were saved that way, it makes it more understandable but not acceptable about why they are doing these practices. I didn't know the gospel. I thought that that vision experience that I had with what I thought was Jesus on January 7th, 2017, was what 
brought me to Christ. Now, at the same time as I had that vision, of course, the gospel was revealed to me, but I was very confused from January to September 2017 because I wasn't yet saved. I didn't fully realize yet that I was a sinner in need of our perfect, sinless Savior, Jesus, who died on the cross to take the wrath that we all deserve. And so during that period of time between January and September when I was saved, you can see in these photos on the screen that I was trying to blend using cards with the Bible. That turquoise book on my chair next to me in these photos, that is the NLT Jesus-centered Bible. And I was reading out of that for my videos as well as drawing cards. And I didn't see that there was any problem with that. It wasn't until I kept studying the Bible and in September 2017, I found the passage that God used to convict me of my card reading. And that was Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12. And it says that anyone who is doing divination or interpreting signs or omens or doing mediumship is an abomination to God. And that shocked me. I thought that I was doing God's work before then because I thought I was helping people. People told me I was comforting them, but I wasn't comforting them or helping them. I was actually leading them away from the true Jesus, leading them away from Bible study and joining a biblically solid local church. For that, I apologize and repent. Michael Brown, after his interview with Jenny, said this about her practices. I appreciate Jenny Hodge coming on my show today, and I don't question her sincerity or her desire to see people come to Jesus and be saved. But I do not, and he's got not in all caps, agree with or endorse the practices used, specifically stones and cards and readings. Michael Brown, as you may know, is a charismatic continuationist, meaning he believes in the continuation of the spiritual gifts. He's not a Calvinist, like uh, Jenny Hodge keeps saying that only Calvinists criticize her use of cards. But one of the things that Michael Brown wrote in that text that he put on Facebook and on Twitter X is that he does not condone the use of stones. Now, that's interesting because only on Church Watch Central, that website, do we see this video that may have been taken undercover of one of Jenny's card readers using agate stone slices on top of the cards. And as you'll see, this is divinatory because she is interpreting signs and omens or pointing to the stone's colors as being symbolic. And that's something I was deeply involved in before I was saved. So I want you now just to choose a stone that you feel led to choose. A stone that just high, that feels highlighted to you. That one, okay. That's cool. <clears throat> So this stone represents these three colors. I want you to just choose color or feel the color that you feel led to, to choose. Okay, cool. Okay, now. Now. Crystals, of course, we know are made by God. They're beautiful. They're in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But the use of crystals is the issue. When God appointed Aaron to have the 12 stones on his high priest uniform to represent the 12 tribes of Israel, that was one thing. That was God-directed. But the other thing is that people in modern times use these stones in idolatrous ways. Idolatry means when you believe that item has special powers, special magical powers apart from God. So using the stones for divination, or even you might say um, to interpret signs and omens, this would be something that's definitely condemned by God, as are the people who are doing it. So here you have a Christian using this stone for the new with a new ager as though it has a meaning. And of course, it doesn't have a meaning. You know, the color may be a beautiful blue color but it doesn't mean anything. And so if a Christian is, is, is talking as though that means something, 
and the new ager hears that and the new ager may think it means something but if the christian is is endorsing that idea you're endorsing a false idea so right there is a deception uh because in, in a christian point of view the colors of stones don't mean anything they don't have any meaning at all so that's 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 not good either. That's a, yeah. a bad witness for Christ. And it's a, and it's a deception because the colors don't mean anything. In this next clip, you'll see Jenny Hodge and some of her card readers on the stage of a mind, body, spirit festival. And Jenny is chanting just like you would see on many stages of new age festivals. And you'll see Jenny nudge the woman next to her. And then that woman starts to chant about the third heaven the third heaven realm, something that they talk about a lot at Christ Alignment. And that woman starts to invoke angels, which is deeply concerning because this is something I was involved in before I was saved. I know now that 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen through 15 applies here. The devil masquerades as an angel of light. And no one in the Bible invokes angels at all. Every angel in the Bible is sent by God. So this is very dangerous that Jenny Hodge and her group are potentially before an audience invoking demons. I release healing over us. I pull down the atmosphere of healing from the third heaven realm. I, I sense there's a huge cloud, a huge atmosphere, a huge cloud of healing, healing wonder. Some of you are going to experience this healing and, and, wonder, at, and wonder at the goodness from the third heaven realm. I call in healing angels, healing angels, healing angels come. You can see in the Christ alignment signs that they offer something called third heaven encounters. This is also known as heavenly tourism, which is not biblical at all. And they talk about third heaven a lot. So let's check in with Don Vino of Midwest Christian Outreach about third heaven from a biblical perspective. The only recording we have about someone going to the third heaven is outlined by Paul. And uh, his outline said that the one who went there, whether it was him or not, he's not sure, uh, whether it was in the body or not, he's not sure, when they returned could not speak about the things that they saw. Uh, there's a reason for that. It is just so holy that we don't take heavenly tourism seriously. So that claim itself is unbiblical, number one. Number two, uh, it seems to me Jesus says something like, blessed are you who have seen, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. So we have no, no biblical teaching anywhere that the way to do evangelism is to help them to see Jesus before them. It's just not there. And it's no wonder that Bethel Redding is connected to Christ alignment. After all, in the book, The Physics of Heaven, that was written by many who are on staff of Bethel Redding, including Bill Johnson and Chris Vallotton, the two seniors of Bethel Redding. In this book, you can see this on the screen, they claim that Christianity needs to reclaim New Age practices from the New Agers. Outrageous. They actually claim that you can look at the Bible and see New Age practices that the New Agers ripped off from Christianity because it's in the Bible. But the thing is, any of those practices in the Bible are condemned. The whole Bible shows what happens when people do not have Jesus as their king. The whole Bible shows humanity's depravity after the fall of Genesis 3. But you have to read the Bible to know that, and you have to read a solid translation, not the passion that the Bethel Church uses most of the time. But the truth is that the Bible tells us to test the spirits in 1 John 4, and that if the spirit is not confessing Jesus biblically, then it's not of God, it's actually of an antichrist. And the spirits that I was getting the angel card readings from 
we're not talking about Jesus biblically. And I just have to say, as a former New Ager, that if I heard someone call Jesus the spirit of truth, I would not have understood it. And Christ to a New Ager means Christ consciousness, which is a man-centered belief. It's not about the Christ of the Bible to a New Ager's mindset. Uh, last time she said that um, I should not criticize Bethel Redding because people there were on fire for Jesus. What do you think about that statement? I'd ask which fire, in which Jesus is she talking about? That's what I would say. Strange fire for a false um, Jesus. You're right. I like I said to you, I don't want to. I don't want to say who this person is, but mm -hmm. I'm, I, I I told you it was in my in the messages when I first reached out to you. This person who's very close to me, um, you know, in church, you know, her whole life, and then did went to Bethel. Um, she was very broken. There was things that she was really struggling with, and I think she really felt that she was going to get um, deliverance there, um, really get what she was looking for spiritually. There was things that she, I think she felt a lot of shame about. She went to, she went to Bethel. She spent a year there and. You said I she went to the, the supernatural school, right? Yeah. So she went to the supernatural school and since she has come back, I have not seen. It's almost like I don't see any Jesus whatsoever. Um, they read, this is the thing, other thing about Bethel. Cause I saw what they, what they, all the books that they read. Um, it's like, where's the Bible in this? Like, why? Okay, I'm not saying that there's no good books out there. There's some amazing Bible teachers, but where's the Bible? Where, where, why, why are you spending all these hours reading these books, but you're not reading the source? Why aren't you reading about Jesus and learning about Jesus? And there's so much focus on the supernatural. And, and just because someone gets healed, if you heal someone, but you never actually gave the gospel to them, what have you really achieved, yeah, really? Yeah. Exactly. How are you different from anybody else? They're still unsaved. They're still going to hell. And I would see some of the horrific things that some of these people have been through, and they're trying to, it's like they're trying to, to, to hide, but they're trying to somehow pacify that pain that's in them. And, you know, the only person that can and can heal you is Jesus. He loves you. And the thing is they get into the new age and then they get tormented by all these spirits and they, they don't have a sound mind. They're, you know, and because in new age you can do whatever you want and there's so much lust that is accompanied, especially like I hear about um, girls that I've met that, you know, there's all these different gurus in the new age and they use sex as a vehicle to subjugate all these women and then they become enslaved to this person and there's all this, you know, all this horrible stuff that goes on. But I want to say to these people that all you have to do is call on the name of Jesus because he will save you in a sec. It doesn't matter where you are. There's no time or space in the things of the spirit and Jesus is there to save you. He loves you. He died on the cross for you and his blood is above every spell, every incantation every warlock, whatever you might be involved in, it doesn't matter what you've done, Jesus loves you and he's just, he's knocking, he's knocking, he's just saying, open the door and, and, and let me into your life. And he will deliver you and he will set you free, just the way he's, he's done it for me in getting okay. saved. So do I think that there's a place for this kind of ministry? Absolutely. But Christ alignment is definitely not that. Wow. Thank you so much. This is so powerful. And um, we will be praying for Jenny Hodge and everyone who's associated with Christ Alignment and Bethel Redding. And uh, just, we all have to keep studying our Bible. And we all have to, you know, the Holy Spirit will illuminate scripture and show us the way and just keep reading and studying that Bible every single day, because that's how we stay away from deception, comparing everything to scripture. So, absolutely. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do mighty works in your name? I will then declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness.